Most of the time when a professional athlete's forced to end their career early before retirement, it's because of some sort of sports-related injury. It's pretty rare to see an actual medical condition or complication cause an athlete to have to retire early. But as most of you probably know, this was the case with Chris Bosch having to end his career early because of repetitive blood clots. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For those new, my name is Brian and I'm a doctor and a sports fan. And it's my goal on this page to combine those two interests to help look at different sports injuries and sports medicine topics to help explain them in a way that's easier for you to learn from and hopefully understand. Now, the first time we heard anything about his symptoms he was suffering from was when he was having more pain in his rib cage. There's a lot of things that can happen to cause pain in the rib cage with breathing, but typically in someone who's young and otherwise healthy, like Chris Bosch, we wouldn't really think of a blood clot in the lungs. You can get a lot of muscle strains, strains of the cartilage around the rib cage that are much more likely to cause pain. And so initially the doctors and medical staff thought that he just had some sort of a strain in that cartilage or muscle around the ribs. Now where it suddenly got worse was when he started developing shortness of breath. And just a strain of those rib muscles doesn't cause shortness of breath. So after that started to develop was when he went to the hospital and was ultimately diagnosed with what we call a pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary is a medical fancy word meaning the lungs and embolism means some sort of clot that traveled from somewhere else. Whenever we think of someone having a heart attack because of plaque buildup in their arteries around the heart, that's what we would call a thrombosis. So it's something that starts in that same local spot and gets bigger, as opposed to an embolism is something that forms elsewhere in the body and then moves to a different place. Most of the time people who have a pulmonary embolism previously had what we call a deep vein thrombosis or a DVT for short. Deep vein implying that it forms in the veins deeper inside the legs or in the arms as opposed to kind of the veins by the skin that you can see. Vein of course being the structure that it forms in and then a thrombosis meaning some sort of a clot. So the typical story we hear about is someone develops a blood clot deep in the veins in their legs, a piece of that clot breaks off, travels up through the rest of the venous system and into the heart. And so that clot goes into the heart, shoots off into the lungs and then gets stuck in those blood vessels deep inside the lungs. Let's talk next about why someone like Chris Bosch could develop such a severe and potentially life-threatening injury that typically we rarely, if ever, see in a young, healthy athlete. Anytime somebody has a blood clot either in their leg, in their lung, wherever, it's our job as doctors to figure out what caused it so that we can potentially prevent and reverse that from happening again. What I wanna draw on to help explain the different causes of these is something called Verkaus triad. And this is something we all learn in medical school. It's kind of one of those things that gets hammered into you. But basically there's three different things that we think about that can put somebody at risk of blood clots. The first is a hypercoagulable state. Any state in your body that causes you to be prone to blood clots. There's a number of different hereditary conditions that can make you more susceptible to clots. Having cancer makes you more prone to blood clots and that's one of the common times we see it. The second thing we think about is blood stasis. And stasis just means no flow or lack of flow. And so anytime the blood is not flowing very well and just kind of sitting there, it's more prone to getting thick and more prone to clotting. This is where you think about those big long plane flights. If you've ever heard about people getting blood clots after a big plane ride, it's because during that plane ride, they're not as mobile and active. And so the blood tends to just pool or set deepen those legs and be more prone to clotting. And the third and final part of the triad is any sort of endothelial cell damage. The endothelial cells are the lining of the blood vessels. They're the actual living cells that make up that inner layer of the blood vessel. If there's any sort of damage, trauma, injury to those cells, it makes you more prone to clotting. So which of these three can we draw on to help maybe explain what was going on with someone like Bosch? He said in previous interviews that they checked for hereditary stuff and didn't find anything, so we can likely cross that one out. So let's next think about the blood flow. And certainly athletes flying on the plane across country are gonna be sedentary for more periods of time and sitting still, but it's not that long of a duration to really say, yeah, this is for sure what caused it. And then third, thinking about this cell damage to the lining of the blood vessels, there was some mention in reports that he thought that this could have been caused by an injury when he was kicked in the calf and had some pain in his calf and then got on a plane, didn't wear his compression socks and then had a long flight. Certainly getting kicked hard enough in the leg might be able to cause enough deep damage to the tissue that you could get some damage to that blood vessel. And then theoretically, if you combine it with getting on a long flight, not having compression socks on to help move that blood up and down, those are two things that could potentially put you at risk. So it certainly is plausible to think that 
the combination of those things could be part of what predisposed him to the clock. There's not really anything like this that happened the second time around, and so it makes me wonder if there maybe is something that just makes his body more susceptible to clots that we just aren't able to find or locate. Last of all, what do we do about treating someone with blood clots like this? And what are those implications on why he had to retire from basketball? So a common misconception is people think he had to retire because of the blood clot, that somehow the blood clot itself put him at more risk. And that's not the case. Oftentimes when someone has a single blood clot that was unprovoked, something we can't identify the cause of, we treat them for a duration of time, usually three to six months, and then they don't need treatment again. The problem is that when someone has a recurrence of a blood clot, they oftentimes qualify for more lifelong treatment with blood thinning medicines. As the name implies, a medicine that thins your blood is going to make it harder for your body to naturally clot if something happens where you have any sort of bleeding. You can imagine an athlete playing basketball is very much at risk of things like getting big deep bruises and hematomas in their leg, falling, hitting their head. There's a lot of instances in professional basketball where you could be susceptible to an injury that causes you to bleed. You couple that with being on a medicine that makes you bleed even more, the reason why they don't want to let him back on the court is because while he's taking blood thinning medicines, if something were to happen and he were to fall and have some sort of a bleed in his head or elsewhere, it could be deadly. The whole thing really is such an unfortunate situation because Bosch, of course, certainly wants to play. He understands what the risks are, but he still loves the sport that much that he wants to play. But on the other side of it, the physicians and the medical staff understand that this could be life-threatening, and as such, you don't want to allow your athlete to go put themselves in a position that could end their life, regardless of whether or not they choose to do it. It's things like this, though, that really make us as physicians kind of step away from the sports side of it and just think about the general health and well-being of that person. So ultimately, it really stinks that he can't play professional basketball in the NBA anymore. Overall, I think it's the best plan for his health and well-being to not be at risk of something potentially life-threatening. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed a little bit different instead of a specific injury, talking about more of a just general medical condition that we saw with an athlete. Again, blood clots and pulmonary embolisms are things that more commonly happen to the general population, and you might even know somebody who's had one. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.